<clears throat> all right so um welcome back to a very long overdue chapter reading of a fan fiction one that we were reading last time uh once again just in case you forgot it's my own friend's summer vacation by pacific sun 360 it's a romance of fan fiction that's extremely good in sports follow me <laughs> um and it's been about two months since i've last done the video i swear i'm fucking second chapter was such a blast, honestly, and I was like, it just definitely was not the long run, but now that I'm not suffering from burnout, here I am, so I'll read this to you, I suppose. <clears throat> chapter 3, August 2nd, Sharing and Missing Items. <sighs> I, woke, I waked up and looked around and I almost forgot what I did yesterday. I got invited yesterday. You mean two months ago? I forgot what I did two months ago. <laughs> I got invited by some nice villagers to a restaurant, and I appreciated that. That was nice of them, and it was nice to meet them. I got up from bed, take a shower, and get dressed and leave the room. I was in the mood to go out and have some breakfast at the urban area. There was a cafe, which is the same restaurant from yesterday. Isn't it like a bar and not a cafe? What is this, Final Fantasy VI, where you just censored all the fucking pubs into cafes? <laughs> <clears throat> they have placed tables outside the building. I take a seat and read the menu. I like being in solitude, despite my ordeal. I need my personal space. I just want a peaceful morning. The waiter brought me some tea. While waiting for my food, I grabbed today's newspaper and read the new, the most talked about story. Bus accident strikes village. Of course it is. It revealed that all the bus suffered a heavy flat tire and affected the other wheels to be stuck or popped out from its base, losing total control and crashed near the bus stop. I'm pretty sure that bus wheels don't work that way, but you do you, author. Um, this also caused a heavy inspection on other buses of the same kind, the same kind of bus that I rode on, and it would take months to get them back in service. The food arrived, it looked good, and it tastes better as I take a bite. Later on, I see two figures coming by. It's Torahiko and Hiroyuki and are waiting. <laughs> good morning, Kelly, how you feeling? Torahiko said. I'm taking some medications to Saki chan I'm feeling better, I said. So much for a quiet morning. <sighs> the pair sat in front of me across the table while I was eating. I wondered what they came for. They were smiling. <laughs> so, Kelly, what's that name of yours that your parents gave you, Torrico asked? You two came for that? Oh, come on. Well, names don't come out of nowhere like that, Harry said. Well, there is a fun fact about it. I was named after my two great-grandfathers. My father's side is Kendrick Elijah, while my mother's side is Lincoln Lloyd Destin. In a coincidence, my parents found out there was an acronym in my name, so like, my parents are called me Kendrick and began called me Kelly for short. I said everything like that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And my sister, I said, I said, I said, I said the two. Man, how I miss this story. It's grammatical errors, holy shit. Uh, oh crap, here you go. Let's just do this. I'll be right back, Turkey said as he ran off, leaving him with me, and I looked at him and said something random. After finished eating, I asked since these two ever asked me something random. I'll do the same. <clears throat> so, I continued, how you two have met. How you two have met. Uh, didn't you know? Didn't Tora mention it to you? No, he didn't. I just simply found out. I was walking behind you. Best friends don't have hands together, I said to girl. Oh, he remembered yesterday. Sometimes uh, Tora refers to us as partners. I see, so how do you two men? I asked again. Here, Yuki doesn't seem bothered by it, and he continued. Tora, Hiko, and I were best friends from childhood. I used to live there in the big city, but my family moved to the big city. Fuck. I used to live here in this village, but my family moved to the big city. Yeah, not, not the other way around. Fucking crap. That's where I grew up. <laughs> One day a year ago, I came to spend the summer here with my friends. One day, Tori had the best of my deals, and I felt like more than a friend. But then I fucking rejected him. And then for 10 years or something like that, I wasn't able to talk to him again. But then I actually got him a route, so now we're dating, I guess. Here you can say, good thing you said it's simple. I was about to fall asleep. <laughs> How about you? Uh, I was blank. I don't know if he's going to ask me back. What, what? You don't even know what? If he was going to ask you anything back, I don't know what the fuck you're trying to say. I think you're, he, like, are, how are you with anyone? But he didn't do anything. It's like, how about you? How did you meet Toriko? <laughs> um, hello? 
Oh well. <clears throat> well, I did ask you to be honest. I'm currently single. I said to hear it. My last relationship did not go to her. What happened? He cheated on me. I simply said, oh, sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's okay. That's why I'm on this trip to recover myself. Oh. Hey, what I miss? I got the list here, you guitar. He came back really quickly. Hey, Kelly, you free today? Well, I was about to go check the old shrine, but what are you guys up to? I said, you want to... I'm gonna buy some ingredients from your next recipe. You wanna come? We can use another taste tester. Uh, I already. I wasn't. Thinking. Well, maybe later in your stomach, because I'm freaking. I'll make it masaga. That sounds perfect. I'll see you at lunchtime. I said, the pair left. Didn't they take us again? I think, yeah, I forget them for getting This entire fanfiction is literally just a self insecurity Jesus. Oh, Lord. <coughs> I changed my mind and decided to take a look at the park. It was green everywhere and cobblestones giving directions everywhere. I sat on a bench, fetched my phone, and I know there's no signal, but I feel like I really want to take a look back at those photos we took last month. I swiped each photo one by one. Our happy faces, our innocence, and our adventures. I really had a lot of fun. These emotions began to swim my mind, and I couldn't help but let a trail, a tear trail down my cheek. I'm so happy I did not have people that cared about me, and I'm glad that I did. Glad I did not die. <laughs> Are you okay, Kelly? You said that I looked to my left and I stared. Where the fuck did you come from? Where did you come from? You startled me. I said, Kelly has that excuse me. <laughs> of course it's good. Of course it's good. Of course. Of course it's Koya, fine, fuck you. Koya has that strange intimidating appearance that somehow startles me. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you, I thought you saw me, he said. Well, at least he has soft, sincere personality, I think. Eh, it's alright, I just had an emotional moment alone, I miss my family already, I sighed. Doesn't seem right that your uncle told you to stay put. Yeah, and he's like, very busy, I just found out that he's the VP's assistant, I said. My uncle lied to my father. Koya chuckles. Yeah, I know it's really lame about my uncle. Good thing Samantha's working with chief flight attendant at the same airline I used to fly here. Hey, Kelly, I think you dropped this yesterday at the restaurant. Oh, thanks. I thought I lost it in the crash, I happily said. It was a photo I printed out from my phone. It was the first photo taken when we arrived there. It was a picture of my cousins, me and my sister, on top of the observation of the Tokyo Sky Tree. I remembered it well. Ashley had had gotten high sickness and I was still dealing with jet lag. And my freaking brother, Ashton, wanted to commit suicide or something, whatever that meant, by jumping off of the sky tree. Why do you look so bored in the pit? Koya asked, chuckling. Oh yeah, I should probably do that with a <coughs> chuckling for me. Um... <laughs> Why do you look so bored in the pit? Koya asked, chuckling. Well, because of the jack lag, I replied, it's been two days since I got here. I was fighting to dominate it. I even drank three cups of coffee to keep up, I said. Koya laughed. Yeah, I know. It was very funny for me, too. So, these are the relatives you mentioned, he said as I showed the photo. I introduced them. Yeah, this is my silver sister, Sylvia. She's 17, and my two cousins, Ashley and Ashton. They're not twins. She's 18, and he's 21, I said. These are the people that I rarely get to party with since we live heavily apart from each other, but I still have family and friends in Seattle. And wow, author, I seriously doubt you have any types of friends or family that would actually give a shit. What a shame you had to write a self-insert fanfiction, though, to escape that really sad reality of yours. Ah, I swear. Uh, let's see. Uh, fuck, where was I? Stupid Discord notification. Um, oh yeah, family in Seattle. Koi and I continued to chat around for a while. He seemed to be a good guy. Good thing I don't judge someone. <laughs> good thing I don't judge someone's cover book. <laughs> okay. Hey, I have to go. Thanks for sharing your stuff with your family and all. Oh, you're welcome. It's really nice to talk to someone. See you later, I said as he walks away. <laughs> At noon, I visited Tarhika's house. He lives in the urban area of the village. Earlier, he had invited me to come to his house to have some of his food. He was going to make Lasaga, an Italian recipe. I knocked the door and someone answers. Oh, Kelly, just in time, he greeted. 
Oh, hello here, Yuki. Is the food already done? Yeah, and you really got yourself busy before- Oh shit, that's Torihiko, um. <laughs> yeah, you really got yourself busy before the food is done, huh? Torihiko said. Must be good timing. I spent the whole morning wandering around the village, I said. Oh, we could have used the tour around the village if we had- Fuck, that's, tor that's Tatsuki. How am I gonna do Tatsuki? It's been a while, um. Thank, 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 thank. I could just do a regular deep voice for Tatsuki, because I actually genuinely like him, he's adorable, so, um, I won't be fucking autistic with him. <clears throat> oh, we could've given you a tour around the village if you just asked us. Tatsuki stands up on the couch and I turn around from behind me. Oh, Tatsuki, I didn't know you were there, I said. Oh, please call me Tatsuni, he said. Alright then. He told me he's a craftsman apprentice. He works with his father in his house where the workshop is. The company's called the Meteora Group, and they built houses and other carpentry-related stuff. I asked him yesterday because he does look like a craftsman. Torihiko, he said that he's a swimming athlete at school. When I was in high school, I turned it down because I didn't want to wear that, uh, mankini bottom. <sighs> they only offered it because I was good in physical shape, and I decided to join the soccer team instead. And Koyo, uh, well, he plays guitar. I haven't asked what he's done for a living, and yes, so we only talked for a short moment. Torhiko took most of the show yesterday, which I did have him toy fun, and Tatsuni-chan got drunk and stripped naked in front of me, then I panicked and I hid myself into the restroom until he was sober. Hey, sorry about yesterday, sometimes I can be pretty careless, Tatsuni said. Oh, it's okay, you're not the- oh, shit. Oh, it's okay, you aren't the only space dragon. This space dragon. <laughs> It's okay, you're the only dragon who got drunk and ended up on the top of the space needle. You see, a fellow friend of mine who is a dragon, by the way, got drunk in a house party and disappeared and I had to call the police and his family. And the next to the police found on top naked of the space needle. I'm glad he was okay, but he told me that dragons have a higher alcohol tolerance. Even this is true, I still doubt that. Oh, here you go, everyone. Bon appetit! Torihiko hand me a dish of Lasaga. Oh my god, it looks so good. OMG, it's really good. I'm in the mood for Italian, baby. So, what do you think? Haha, <laughs> Torihiko asked nervously. It's delicious. It's really good, I comment. You really improved your cooking, Torihiko. Here, Yuki comments. <laughs> Same here, Torihiko, Tatsuni said. <laughs> Well, thanks guys, Torhiko blushes. I'm so getting a second trip to Venice right now. Let's go, girls. <laughs> I randomly said. <laughs> Suddenly the door knocks. Here Yuki reaches. <laughs> oh my fucking god, it's my favorite character. Toshi-san. <laughs> oh, hi, Toshi-san. We are greeted. Hi, everyone. He looks at me. Ah, oh, Kelly, there you are. I got a call from your cousin and written, me written everything he told me to tell you. Everything in this message. He told me it was urgent. Toshi-san hands me paper. Oh, how urgent, I asked. He told me you have nine items that are likely to be in your suitcase. He told me that they had been using his inventory without asking. Toshi explained. I read it aloud and said, Ashley's makeup box, Sylvia's I Love Tokyo t-shirt, Ashley's graphic novel, Ashley's mp3, Ashton's DVD anime movie, Ashton's samurai so- <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I don't think you can fit a fucking samurai sword into a fucking suitcase, but okay. Be my guest. <laughs> Be my guest. Fine. I don't even care. <clears throat> Sylvia stuffed animal, Ashton's satellite phone, and Ashley's laptop. Then one of the items gave me a freak out of attention. A, a samurai sword? What the hell, Ashton? I cried out loud. Oh, cool, can I see why your cousin brought a sword? For what for? Here, Yuki said. Well, I do know that he do judo, but as a samurai, that's something new and something I don't know my cousin, I said. Maybe as a secret life, a super samurai at night and fighting crime, here Yuki exaggerates. That's the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard, Toshi and I said it simultaneously. Maybe he stole it, Torihiko said. 
he wouldn't do that. He can't even steal a baby from a, I can't steal baby from a candy. I'm fucking terrible at reading. Um, he can't even steal a candy from a baby. I said. I know he was a collector. He never showed me his room. So, <clears throat> Do you remember him being in a black market? Toshi asked. Oh, I remember being in a local market in Fuji a few days before I crashed here. <clears throat> well, there's nothing further, but you could always ask your cousin, Toshi said. Well, I'll deal with it later. Those things can wait. What will soon come next? Being kidnapped by ninjas in the middle of the night? I randomly said as I crossed my arms and sigh. <sighs> you really read my mind, Hiro said. My cousin can be the really weird when it comes to collecting things, even the most exotic ones. <laughs> what a weird note to end this chapter on, but okay. Well, that was significantly shorter than the last one. Let's see, let's go to chapter four. Also, if you hear autistic screaming in the background, that's my little sister playing Fortnite, so yeah. Um, oh fuck, it's the Funari episode. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> August 3rd, when in Funari. A beautiful day, and my deep blue eyes can tell this. My deep blue Aryan blonde eyes of Hitler can tell this. Today is a hot day. It's the middle of summer, and I think the sun is playing jokes on me. Again, I was walking by the urban area, the center of the village, and in front of me I see what is supposed to be a candy store. The sign says it, but the exterior looks very old-fashioned. I wonder if there's ice cream. I could, t I could use some sweet refreshments. As I step inside, I, I just totally forgot. Japan has the good stuff. In America, I only see simple, normal candy, but in Japan, there's a bizarre variety of Namaan candy treats of all kinds. I don't know who invents the type of candies I'm not familiar with, even flavors I've never heard of nor tasted of. I don't even want to ask the weird flavors. I might vomit. Kelly-san? Someone t called me. I turned around and see a young, brown, furred wolf boy. Oh, hi, Shunkun. How are you? I greeted. I just found he's 17 years old. He looks in his preteen years. Fuck, dude. Big mood. I'm the I didn't know Shun Kodori was my spirit animal this entire time. I look 12 and I'm 17. <laughs> and I've been treating him like a kid. I'm sorry, Shun. <laughs> I'm feeling... <clears throat> Let me think. I should do like a slightly higher pitch voice for him. <clears throat> I'm feeling great. Woo! He said, woof. So, are you going to buy an ice cream too? It's really hot outside, Shunkun said. Well, yeah, I wonder what they're having. I just want a simple flavor. I heard in that Japan, they make some really weird flavors that I don't want to know. I said, oh, there are flavors that you like, Kelly-san. Come on, it's over here. Shun leads the way. Just as expected, there's a weird variety of ice cream flavors that are really exotic. Among them are squid. <laughs> Is this actually a thing? Oh my god. Squid ink, shrimp, sushi. Meat, jalapeno, sweet corn, mint. Mint isn't an exotic flavor. What the fuck? You know what? Never mind. I don't know who the fuck. I don't know where the fuck you live. Where mint ice cream is an exotic flavor, but okay, mint for me. Honestly, mint and chip is for the win, brothers. <clears throat> mint, garlic, and pizza. What the hell? I'm gonna do that in the fabulous list. What the hell? Well, at least if there's some of my favorites in common in America. Rocky Road, Wildberry, Blueberry, Strawberry, Chocolate Lemon, etc. I'll just go with Rocky Road and let's go, girls. <laughs> Outside and sitting on a bench, Shunkun and I were enjoying our flavors while Shunkun talks about other weird ice cream flavors around the world. I think I'm gonna lose my ice cream appetite after this. People do make really weird candy flavors just to make money and publicity, I said to Shun. Yeah, I think your country doesn't like creative flavors, Shun said, and he continued. Oh, hey, I'm gonna go to the game store. You wanna come with me? Shun offered. Uh, okay, I slowly replied, thinking if I have plans for the day. <laughs> no, I don't. Let's go. After we finished licking the ice cream and eating the waffle cone, we both arrived at the small store. Oh, it's close today, Shunkun cried. Oh, sorry, Shunkun, maybe another time. No, wait, let's go to Funari. I have a cousin who works there. Shun have a second option. Funari? Where's that? I asked. Oh, it's a bigger town, but it's pretty far away from me. My cousin works on a video game store there. I'm sure the new game is there. Shun replied, but wait. And you get there by bus. Right? I got confused. How can you get to Funari if there's no bus services after the exit? Isn't the bus services have been suspended? <laughs> I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, that's a point, actually, but I don't know. Let's see what Shun has to say. Kelly-san, the bus that you took was an express bus, not the branch line buses. 
Shun could made a clear info. Made a clear info. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> to make things clear, the bus I rode on was a large, long distance bus for express service. The ones that Shun mentioned were smaller, short distance buses. Those weren't suspended from service. But those buses wouldn't take me back to Tokyo. I'm still officially stuck here. Oh, I see. I said to Shun after realizing it. Um, Kelly's son? Shun speaks up. Can you pay the fare? I'm saving my money for the game. Can you do it? He gave me that innocent look on his face. He's begging me to come. Oh my ocean. Why is he begging me like this? Why is he doing this to me? Why? His eyes were hypnotizing me. They're big and blue and brighter than mine. Okay, I'll go with you. Please stop. What are you doing? I cried and begged him to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the bus station, Kelly son. Shun grabbly runs off and grabs my left hand, dragging me around. Shun, you're dragging me. I'm going to fall. Slow down. How strong is he? Once we arrived at the bus stop, I wasn't familiar with the part of village, but there was something shocking for me. It's still there? What the hell? They haven't towed it away? For the first time since the accident, the bus is still lying on the grass, all rolled over and twisted, broken glasses, pieces of plates everywhere, and completely off-road. I can see the tire tracks left on the road, and the tires all blown over everywhere. There's even yellow tape that says, do not cross the Japanese. This is the first time I see the horrors of aftermath of a disaster. I can still hear the terrible sound of screaming and wrecking passengers in my mind. I felt a terrible sick feeling in my stomach. I'm starting to feel depressed. I'm surprised. I can't believe I can survive that, I said to myself. Well, neither can I. <laughs> Shun Kun looked at me and asked, Are you okay, Kelly Sung? Yeah, I'm fine, I said. I'm sorry to me to see you here to see this, Shun said. I don't mean we really want to go to Funari, right? You feel guilty for this. I understand, Shun Kun, but let's just focus on what we're doing, okay? Okay, Kelly Son, Shun said, and he focused on what we came for. The bus that arrived, it was shorter in length, it has a smaller capacity, passenger capacity. Shun and I boarded in. I calmly seated and buckled up and forgot what happened in there. It wasn't that far this time to Funari. While riding the bus, Shun speaks up. Are you afraid of riding the bus after your accident? Or he asked. Well, I'm not dead. The bus didn't kill me, surprisingly, for whatever. Reason. Probably because Mary Sue shit or something, but but that did not stop me from riding buses again. I replied, well, I mean, that makes sense. Oh, sure it is. A lot of people confront their fears by trying again. There's always a second chance, right? But I still have lots of feelings to recover from my deal, so it takes me time to recover. The bus arrived at our destination, Funari. It feels like Tokyo somehow. We drop out of the bus. Shun leads the way. Come on, Kelly son, it's over here. Shun can grab my right injure arm. It was painful! After being dragged around by a running wolf boy for ten agonizing minutes, he lets go of my arm. I calmly recover and catch my breath. Shun, next time, grab my other arm. If you're in a hurry. I panted. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kelly son. Shun said his ears lowered in shame. Uh, I can't be messed with him. It's alright, Shun Kun, just don't touch my right arm. Inside of the video game store looks very modern and fun loving. There are a lot of mascots in Japanese release games, and I can't have these games because they're from Japan and are made for this country. Not for the US, despite the fact I can speak their language. Um, have you heard of emulation? Oh no, it's, it's Gaku. Fuck Christ. Oh, hi, Gaku-san, how's it going? Shun can greet the wolfman that works there, which happens to be his cousin. He's taller than Shun. <clears throat> Hello, Shun kun I'm sure you weren't expecting this game, right? His cousin handed him the new game and has been looking forward to it. Then he looks at me. He gives me a strange look on his face. <sighs> Shun kun who's your new foreigner friend? He called me a foreigner. Well, I am a tourist. This is Kelly, uh, um, Solovania. <laughs> Shun can horribly mispronounce my surname. It's Sullivan, Shunkun. Uh, Kelly san, this is my cousin Gaku Kodori. Shunkun introduced me. It's nice to meet you, Kelly san. Shunkun told me about that you were the injured passenger from the bus accident. Is that right? Good, he san asked. Yeah, I'm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm lucky to be alive. That bus could have killed me, but now I'm sort of stuck in the village with my uncle to mistake for because he's very busy. I said to him, No offense, but your uncle is kind. Irresponsible? Yeah, kinda. I cut him off rudely. <laughs> well, I was going to say selfish. I'll go with that too and none take it. And also, I'm pretty sure that my uncle is not going to say word to my parents about what happened. My parents are calling my uncle's responsibility to take care of me, so, but instead he leaves me around my older cousin to take care of us while traveling around. 
And look what happened. I was accidentally left behind and put myself in danger. Um, okay. After Shun purchased, wait, wait, purchased, you mean stole, so he stole his video game, we checked out some other games and some upcoming games that had been announced. Shun Kun and I leave the store, and now what? Can we go back to the village? My stomach's telling me something, though. Uh, are you hungry, Kelly san? Shun Kun asked while chuckling. He heard my stomach growling. Uh, is there a place we can, like, eat before we, like, go? Shun Kun may know a place, right? I mean, how many times has he visited a place to see his cousin? Oh, there's a sushi bar around. Are you in the mood for sushi? Oh, did he say sushi? I love sushi! Sure, where is it? It's right over here. He pointed that way. It was close, so no need to walk very far. We entered the sushi bar and take some seats and ordered some food and soft drinks. While eating and enjoying ourselves, I began to think about the broken down bus symbol my uncle had said to me the other day. Seriously, my uncle's responsibilities are so ridiculous. He could do something better than leaving alone in this village. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Kelly son, I'm gonna go use the restroom, Shunkin said. He really has to go. He ran towards the restroom door. While waiting for him we, so we can leave, a familiar policeman walks in. It was Koya. What was he doing here? Oh, Kelly, what are you doing here? Koya said, and he smiled. Oh, Shunkun, like, brought me here. He paid the fare for me so he can save his money so he can... He made me pay fare so I can save his money so he can buy his new video game. I mean, steal his new video game from his cousin's store. I replied to him as he sits down. Did he give you that begging face to you? Koya asks as he grins. Yeah, but I'm glad for helping him. It wasn't that hard, I said as Koya looks at me. He noticed something. Hey, are you okay? You look kind of down. He said that I knew what he meant. Well, I I just saw the bus and it was still there. A at the bus stop, all broken up. I, uh, I, I feel kind of sick, I replied. Did you have a nightmare recently? No, I, I just feel like this empty feeling that I can't leave it that way. I lowered my hand and looked down at my costume. This is going to be so fucking retarded with the fabulous voice. Jesus Christ. I, I don't feel guilty or anything, but like, I feel like left behind. I, I, thinking about my uncle, what he did recently. I feel angry at him. Why don't you just come and get me? I feel like I was about to cry. I breathe in and out rapidly. I, I wish he came to me the burning when I was held up and showed me some real care. All I got was that quote unquote ill fated call. That's the only thing he showed some care to me, and I was alive. And now he's telling me to stay put until the end. I slowly raised my voice. But you don't hate him. Koya said, no, I don't hate him. I know his behavior for a long time. My dad still deals with him, and he knows my uncle since was born. <laughs> <laughs> you don't fucking say, Sherlock. Wow, I didn't know your dad didn't know his brother. I didn't ever think that they would have known each other ever since they were born. Wow, dude, no shit. Next, you're going to tell me that the sky can be not only blue, but can also turn pink. Wow. And I don't think I'm gonna last a day in Minnesota. I'm stranded on a deserted island and being ignored by the rescue team and say, the rescue can wait. I give myself a final blow and lie my head on the table and fucking die. <laughs> hey, 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 calm down, Kelly. I know this, this, I know this is hard on you. I see that your uncle did things he's not proud of, but didn't he did this just for your own protection? Koya said he's put his hands on my shoulders and look at him and calms me down. He looks straight at my eyes. I didn't notice his eyes were golden yellow. Well. Maybe he did. I softly said as I called myself, Koya sits back. And have you ever found a bright side of this situation? He said, no, I haven't. I still feel abandoned like a lost orphan, and this is how it feels. God, no one fucking understands me, Koya, I said. <laughs> Koya showed him to do some proof of peace and said, don't say that, Kelly, you're not alone, he sharply said. I think again, and that's true. I've just recently met some people that showed me some care and they made me feel welcome. Those forgotten words that Koya said gave me a slight smile on my face. But I really wish I'm with someone who's close to me to feel more accomplished, but that never happened and that's why I feel so alone. Well, I really appreciate that you guys are so nice to me. I feel like you guys are trying to make me forget everything that happened, I said and slowly smiled. Yeah, stop worrying about the accident, your uncle. That's in the past now, Koya said. Well, I still want to give him peace of my mind to my uncle, I said, and Koya and I laughed a little. <clears throat> so, where's Shunkun? Koya changed the subject. I think he's still in the bathroom, I said, and out of nowhere, Shunkun came from behind Koya. I'm back, I'm feeling relief, Shunkun barked up. Ah, Shunkun, you scared me, Koya cried, and I laughed. Oh, sorry, Koya-san. So, Koya, what were you doing here, Kunari? Do you work here? I asked. No, no, I worked in Kazanari in a music shop, and also, I don't think I've mentioned to you, I'm also a member of a band. Oh, 
Really? Oh my gosh, that's so cool, Koya. So you play the guitar, an electric guitar, right? I said with enthusiasm. Right, he said in a very concerned tone. <laughs> Koya-san and his bandmates are really good. You should see them playing, Shunkun brought more. What's the name of the band? I asked. Music use, are you familiar with it? Well, there's a lot of bands around the world, and I don't know all of them, so you just started, right? I said, yeah, we made our debut a year ago. We were very successful. Uh, uh, Kelly son? Shunkun called me. What is it, you little twerp? Don't you see I'm talking to the one that I'm going to, like, smash later in the story? God, I mean, not that, Kelly, but... Well, we better go or we'll miss the next bus, Shunkun pointed out. Just wait, I have to... Just wait, it must be the check, I said to Shunkun and looked Koya. Koya, yes. Thank you. No problem. He smiles and he winks at me. Come on, Shunkun, we better catch the bus, I say in great motivation. Yay, Shunkun chilly takes off and runs. Today I met Shun's cousin, Gaku. He seems okay. I also met Koya. Again, he's really a great guy. He somehow cheered me up in those words. He said it really managed to find my heart. I think I have room for one more chapter. Maybe. Maybe. If not, this is where the video ends, but if it doesn't end here, I'm going to do the fourth, the, the, the fifth chapter, the fourth day. Okay. <clears throat> August 4th, Stress-Free River. Morning already, and it's a hot one, really hot. I couldn't use the bed blankets. I even opened the windows with the breeze, and the fan wasn't even operating well, but lucky I'm quite a heavy sleeper. I take off my clothes and I take a nice cold shower. I put it over the cold and. Oh my god! Hot, 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 hot! I swear, I put it in cold but still hot foil. What the hell? I almost burned my left hand. The door began to knock like crazy. I hear someone shouting. I think I know who it is. I grab a towel and I wrap it around my waist, walk to the door, and open see one desperate Toshi in front of me. <laughs> I'm too late, aren't I? He said. Yeah, I almost burned my left hand, asshole. I said as I showed my red left hand. Good thing it wasn't a one degree. A one degree. <laughs> Not a first degree, but no. A, a, fir a, a one degree. <laughs> if it was a one degree burn, wouldn't that mean you got burned from like literally ice coldness or something? Oh, I'm sorry, Kill. It seems that the water system got overheated, so you're gonna have to wait till it cools down. Toshi sincerely apologizes. Oh, great. Now I'm gonna smell like a garlic, I moaned. Don't be stuck, you can have a swim in the river, it's really relaxing. Toshi just gave me an alternate way to clean myself. Hmm, you know, that's not a bad idea, maybe I'll learn some naked furry dudes or something. God, I said. Well, I'm sure the guys are gladly going to do that, Toshi said. He closed the door for me. Well, it's time for me to go to law. I have three swing trunks, one blue, one gray, and one green in the drawer. Today I picked the gray one, I picked a towel. White t-shirt, sandals, and off to go. From the Ushima into the river, it was a nice walk through the sunflower fields. The first thing I see is the river, the trees, and one small gazebo made out of wood with two benches. I put the sandals on my t-shirt and towel, yeah, and towel on the beach and take a look at the water. It was clear and refreshing. I also bought my headset waterproof headphones so I can relax the music in my surroundings and ignore everything. No worries. Okay. This is something I really needed, and I'm all alone, especially something I've really experienced myself. Especially in a foreign country. I slowly slept in the water and it was nice. It was like a spa treatment, but more natural. I lay down in a rock park to submerge. The rock looked like a deck chair. Mother Nature can really be creative. I mean... I mean, you aren't wrong. You definitely aren't wrong there. Um, As I lay there and listened to my headphones, nothing can be more relaxing than this. I look at the sky. There was no clouds. Today is sunny. Again. This gives me a good mood to sing as I listen to the music and it's an embarrassing habit of mine that I always forget, but I was along so no one would hear me. Every song in the next soundtrack took another. I close my eyes and sing softly along with passion. It gives me the good old times back home. Without knowing my surroundings, because of my headphones in my ears, I'm only feeling the river swell the stream on my body while my head is only standing in the thing above water. Something poked my nose several, several times. And that made me force to open my eyes and stare at three different looking huskies. Of course it's the three huskies, yes. I take off my headphones and surprise my face turns so red. I've been caught in the act or something. Um, were you jerking yourself off in the thing? Otherwise you wouldn't have been caught in the act. I mean... Ugh. I see the three in a microsecond in their swimming pants. Toshi is only wearing a brown boxer. Saki-chan is wearing a one-piece swimsuit from top to bottom covering all of her and thinks she's not the type of girl who likes a model around. But what the hell, what the most disturbing was was Koya. What the hell is he wearing right now? Is that underwear? He's wearing a bikini with a black one. I think I'm gonna puke right now. But instead of swallow, I don't want to spoil my appetite, despite not having eaten anything. 
I only looked at him in a microsecond, sent my ass up to three of them face to face. <coughs> oh god, I'm gonna have to do Saki's for a long while. <clears throat> you seem to be enjoying yourself, Saki Chan smiled. You seem pretty good, aren't you? That's some vocal you got there, Koya said and smiles. Um, thanks, but I only do this for fun, I honestly said to the crew. I slowly cover from my breath. This is so awkward. You sound sometimes in the shower, have you? Saki Chan said while giggling. Well, everyone's singing the shower, so what's the big deal? I said. <laughs> so true, Toshi san said. Cannonball! <laughs> a large splash burst out of nowhere. Rising out of the water was Tatsuki. He was wearing that weird Japanese underwear. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Tatsuki greets. We're fine, the four of us replied, and looks like he's not alone. Sataru, Shun, and Kyoji also arrived. Oh, hey everyone, how's the water? Sataru said. Oh, it feels good, you should come on in, Tatsuki replied. The three stepped in in their underwear, no swimming took no problems like that. I'm not used to it. The others began to do what they do in the river. Saki and Toshi began to converse with Kyoji while Tsuki is playing with Sataru and Shun, splashing each other, and Kyo- and Kyoji. Koya is sitting right next to me. Of course, Koya is sitting right next to me. I turned off the headphones while we started to talk. So, how far are you enjoying your stay here, Kelly? Koya asked, pretending nothing crazy happened yesterday. I don't know what. Uh, so far, so good. I've been, I've been having crazy situations before. I said, like, what? Well, this isn't the first time I've had a near-death experience. Really? Well, I, mean, I suppose I can believe that, considering you're Mary Sue. Well, well when I was 10, I was on a trip to Alaska, and I was ice skating with my sister while my father was watching us. I was standing on thin ice, and it cracked, and so, like, I fell, and I got myself filled with all that cold water that was hurting me. My dad grabbed me from the water and took me to the place where we stayed, and he puts me in a hot tub, and I stayed there for hours, and then I fucking died. Because if you do that, the blood gets so warm, you just boil up to the point of death. However, I'm a Mary Sue, so I was very much immune to it, so it just warmed me up. And so... That way, I got I stayed alive in that hot tub. That putting me in that hot tub because I am the most perfect being of all time was perfectly clever. Anyone else would have fucking died though. Wow, that's a uh, that's intense, Kelly. And now this one, you seem to be pretty damn unstoppable. Uh, unstoppable, damn straight. Yeah, Shunko told me you don't care what happened. You need to just continue riding on buses. Uh, oh yeah, yesterday I said. So Kelly, you happen to have friends on? Yeah, I have friends from the from childhood or new who came to town. You have a girlfriend? He grins at me. No, I'm single and I prefer guys. I said with no problem. It's not personal anymore. Everyone in my family, a couple friends, know that I'm homosexual. Really? So by currently single, you used to have a boyfriend, according to this. <sighs> Yeah, I sighed. I just found out that my boyfriend was cheating with another guy. What did you do after that? <laughs> I revengefully broke up with him. I said, revengefully. I mean, if he was cheating on you, I don't know why he would care, but okay, understandable. Well, what did you do to him? Oh, don't get me wrong, he deserved it. After finding out I vomited in a bucket, because I was so sick, I took the bomb in through it and it broke everybody in the house party. And then I also met his other lover, who also took him, he and I were together on the bench. Um, okay. Wow, Kelly, you seem to be a fucking Mary Sue. Well, I mean, you may seem to have an evil side, don't you, Kelly? That guy must have been a douche. Oh, dear. Well, yeah, he had it coming. No one messes with Kendrick, Elijah, Lincoln, Lloyd, Yeston, Kelly, Sullivan, I said. That's your name? It's very long, man. What the fuck? Koyo laughs. Hey. Yeah, I know. So after that, did he really hurt you? He asked. I sighed and said, Yeah, after that, I called myself and promised myself to not do something like that again unless someone messed with me again. Later, I was heartbroken. I was trying to recover from that event. That's why I came to Japan to forget everything and move on. Even though you came to Japan because your uncle, because your parents forced you to, but whatever. I just want to be someone with happy with. I mean, look at here, Yuki and Tarahiko. They are really happy together, even though it took them literally 10, 20 years to do that. And then I look at the two huskies. Oh, hey, is Saki chan and Toshi san couples? Koya looks at the two. Saki chan and Toshi san? Yeah, they are. That's another example, Koya replied. Looking at the pair, they do seem to be happy together. I wonder how those two met. There's a million ways to fall in love, right? <laughs> oh, whoa, what's this? Shunkun picked up something in the water. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what I see what he's holding. Ah, it's someone some doshi. Ew. He shun threw it to Sataru. Ew, gross. Don't throw it at me, Shun. Sataru threw it away and was being taken by the river's current. Hey, that's mine. Kelly couldn't go grab it. Tatsuki shouted. 
you go grab it. I'm not going to touch it. I backed up. Tatsumi swims towards Undoer, and Toshi-san is like a chunk over their eyes with their hands. So, why'd you throw it? Kiyoshi-san asked the lion boy. I freaked out, he said. My answers are the same here, Toshi-san, and I simultaneously said. I got it! Tatsuki grabbed it, probably put it back on. Next time, Tatsumi, make sure it's well tied, Saki-chan said. After that naked situation, I went back to the inn and called my cousin about their missing belongings. I pressed the buttons, the same old hopeful, and press hold and wait. <clears throat> Sullivan's residence, who's speaking? Auntie Samantha answered the phone. Hi, Samantha. Oh, hi, Kelly. How's everything? I heard you meet new friends there, she said. Yeah, um, listen, I got a letter from Ashton about their belongings that are in my suitcase, and one of them is a sword. Do you know anything about it? I asked. Oh, really? That sounded bad. Well, I'm going to have words with Ashton about this, so it's in your luggage, she said. Well, I haven't checked my coop suitcase, so I'm going to do it now. Okay, call me again when you find the sword and other stuff. Bye. She hanged up. Ashton's in so much trouble. It seems Ashton has been keeping secrets from everybody, including me. Well, yeah. I unzipped my large suitcase. It was almost empty, and there was unfamiliar arms I remember the other day. I read the list and took a suitcase. Ashton's make a box. It was a little token shoes, blah, 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 blah. But I didn't see a samurai sword in my case. Is some kind of joke? I've checked every compartment in my suitcase. Well, you don't fucking say. I don't think no fu I don't think there's any samurai sword that could fit in a suitcase. They probably. <sighs> Jesus Christ. This is really getting on my nerves, Ashton. I speak out loud. It wasn't until. I didn't know it was this zip. <laughs> Fucking god. I unzipped it, and there it was. Whoa. It was well case color black. I opened it and seen an incredible sword. <laughs> what? This weeaboo shit is like way too much for me to handle. Oh no. I can see myself in the blade <laughs> and the grip part is a phenomenal design with dragon details. Why did Ashton buy his sword for? I thought to myself. This really is a mystery. And the next mystery that is when I'm going to do more of this shit, who knows, maybe I'll see you again after fucking January when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, but who knows. I hope you all have a lovely night, and I thank you for listening thus far. And next time we continue with this, we'll be seeing more of the family. <laughs> oh, bye.